Okay, um, so this is a very big room and I am very small. So I'm gonna tilt this down a bit. <laughs> I'm also literally on my tippy toes right now. So if I fall over, I apologize. Um, speaking of my clumsiness, all my notes are on paper and I've given myself a pretty wicked paper cut. So <laughs> for context of who I am. <laughs> um, also for context of who I am, I do want to give a little bit of a content warning for my talk. If any of you follow me online, you probably know that I talk about a lot of mental illness activism, and this talk is going to veer into that category. Um, also, more in line of who I am, if you do know me, you probably know me from my games work. You probably know me from my games criticism that I publish, or from the games that I make. I make little small games in Twine, typically about mental illness and typically horror games. My friends always beg me to please make something cute, maybe make a game about hugging, and I don't do that. <laughs> My partner once tricked me into making a game about a pet rock, and I haven't forgiven them since. <laughs> um, but beyond that, I also work in publishing, and this is something that I don't talk about online a lot. But I am an editor, I work for a publishing house in Toronto, and I've been doing so for the past couple of years. And it's interesting straddling those two different lines between publishing and video games. And there's a lot I've kind of learned as a writer working in both fields. Um, but mostly, what I really want to start with is saying is that I really love books. I love books. I live and breathe them. Sometimes my roommate will come home to find me sitting in my room in front of my bookshelf, just flipping through my old books, rereading my marginalia, and like just kind of like hugging my books. Like, I really, really love books. So needless to say, when I decided to turn a short story I had been working on for a really long time into a video game, my friends and families had a lot of questions for me. Most of the conversations revolved around, that's really cool, we're really glad you're doing this, but why? But why indeed? This is something I've thought about for quite some time. My dream was always to publish a novel of my own original fiction. As a kid, I wouldn't stop writing full-length manuscripts. I still have these books, um, scribbled in pencil in spiral-bound notebooks with terrible table of contents that clearly reveal I was just writing Dungeons and Dragons fanfiction and had no original ideas of my own. Um, I wrote a list of fright tips, <laughs> um, things that you should include if you want to write a good horror story. I wrote these when I was 10, and every once in a while, I will send these to an author if I'm working with an author who's writing something scary, and I'll be like, you should just look at these. Look how smart I was. Um, <laughs> Um, so I wrote nonstop. I wrote sprawling fan fiction that turned into original fantasy that finally turned into literary fiction as I entered university. I did a creative writing fiction program and then I went on to do my master's in English. I submitted stories to every liter literary magazine I could think of. I got stories published in a few. I was 18 when I received my first check for my own original fiction. It was amazing. I showed it to everybody. I put it up on the fridge, and then I eventually was like, no, I need that $10, and then deposited it. <laughs> um, and so it was great. I loved writing. I did it all the time. And then I stopped. In university, things got really hard for me. After the death of a friend, my mom getting diagnosed with cancer, a relationship ending, and a whole ton of other bad shit, the eating disorder that always just kind of lingered at the back of my existence came out in full force. I stopped doing anything that wasn't studying, drinking, or starving myself. My writing became a source of anxiety rather than pride. It stopped mattering because as my mental illness took a stronger and stronger hold on me, I stopped believing I was capable of doing anything good at all. So fast forward five years. I'm now working at a publishing house. I'm living in Toronto. Things are going good. After a few years of relative recovery, I found myself at another major turning point, both my mental illness and my writing. Relapsing hard after finally getting out of a long-term abusive relationship, getting my video, games video game criticism writing published more widely and becoming a more active member of the video game community, I started writing fiction again. Except it didn't click the way it did before. Something was missing. It felt dull. It felt lackluster. It felt lonely. I felt isolated and terrified, writing about how hard it was coming out of a relationship that spent five years gaslighting me about a mental illness I didn't have while ignoring the one that I did have. Writing felt wrong. It felt terrible. So I stopped writing. 
Even though writing was the only way I felt like I wasn't drowning underneath it all. And even though writing was the only way I felt like I could get any bit of control that wasn't food related. Then one day, a friend said to me, you should make a game. I'm like, okay, great, how? Like, so I laughed and I said, no, I don't know how to make a game. And then that's when I realized there was nothing holding me back from making my own game. I worked in games, I wrote about games, why not try making one my, myself? So I took my short story that was started, that was stalled, and changed it so it could fit into Twine. I broke it up, added in bits where I wanted the players to have an active hand in the self-harm the main character was undergoing, and then I got to work. That game was Stop Me If You've Heard This One Before. It was my first game, and it is so ugly now, <laughs> but I love it so much, and so I made it in Twine. After I released it, I was terrified. People were going to hate it. People were going to hate me. Moments after I released it, my abusive ex, whom I was no longer speaking to, called me. He left a voicemail. Hey, Kate, I'm just on break at lunch. Just want to clear something up with you. Please call me back. I never did. I hid my phone. I hid my computer. I think I hid under my desk. I just hid. Then other people started contacting me. Friends, acquaintances, colleagues, strangers, all telling me they loved Stop Me, telling me they felt the same way telling me they felt less alone, telling me I helped them feel less alone. Those comments haven't stopped coming, not since when I first released it, going on almost three years now. I've made lifelong friends because of releasing Stop Me. I've become stronger because I made Stop Me. It was a game changer, and I wanted to have a slide that said pun intended, but I forgot. So, <laughs> so since then, I've continued to make games. I've released four major games now, all made in twine, all about horror and healing, except for one I made um, a two-player, or I programmed a two-player cooperative wrestling game in Twine with Yifat, and it was the most proud I've ever been because I broke Twine, because everybody was like, you can't build a two-player wrestling game in Twine, and I said, okay, I will, though. <laughs> um, so these are two of my games that I've done. Um, so why do I keep making games about healing now, now that it's out of my system, now that I'm better, now that I have some more support and I have that community? And I kind of, and so I, I started thinking about this. I was like, I'm much more accomplished now in my writing. I have more publishing credits. Why don't I go back to publishing? Why don't I try to write that book of original fiction I always wanted to do? And I realized it's because there's three huge reasons as to why I stay in game making. Confidence, accessibility, and community. So the first thing I want to talk about is confidence. I don't know how much you all know about literary publishing communities, but they're very elitist. They are super elitist. I say this as some of my best friends all work in publishing and we are some of the most elitist people ever. Um, and so a lot of this elitism and disdain is focused on self-publishing. And like, I know that they are trying really hard in publishing. Sites like Wattpad that let you upload your own fiction and disseminate it, and Amazon's coming up with its own self-publishing branch. They're trying but it's nowhere near where it should be. There is still so much disdain towards self-publishing. And I think that's because in traditional book publishing, there's a lot of pride in being published, in being found, in being selected. The pride is based on an understandable sentiment. Someone else thinks my work is good. But literature and publishing houses also act as curators of taste and style. What gets chosen becomes part of their creation. Being published by a traditional publisher validates the work an author does because it says, hey, we think, your stuff, we think your stuff is good. We think your stuff stands out. And that's awesome. That's great. A lot of people have been able to make a lot of success that way and be able to make a lot of change. But let's not delude ourselves. A lot get left out, get left behind the gates of traditional publishing. There are a lot of barriers to access, which I'll talk about more in my second point, that limits who can even be considered for tr traditional publishing. And that sucks. So people turn to self-pubbing, which is great. It lets people tell their own stories. It allows for more stories to be told. But a lot of people in publishing turn their back on this. This kind of elitism, elitism and disdain towards self-publishing basically is non-existent in indie game making. In fact, it's encouraged. It's celebrated. Look at games like Sybil or Depression Quest. They're all made by a person who self-published it. And they're all personal, and they're all wonderful, and they all do so much. And so like being able to publish your own work without being told that you're less than 
allows for so much confidence in making work. This kind of confidence allows people who don't have access to agents, publishing houses, and editors the chance to write and tell their story how they want to and as a way of connecting people. So this brings me to my next point, accessibility. Beyond just breeding greater confidence and allowing more voices to be heard, games, especially when making a personal game in something like Twine, allows for freedom of content. I can tell my story exactly how I want it to be told. Nobody can change anything. But there's more than just creative freedom. Programs like Twine make telling stories super accessible because you don't have to go through channels of marketability, profit and loss statements, and the general market or in the general marketability to even be considered for publication. Book, ap book acquisitions is a tough process that tends to lean very heavily on the market and market trends that often means people's stories get cut out simply because they don't fit the bigger picture of the market. But we're all not perfect examples of a marketable storyteller. We don't all have massive Twitter platforms, and sometimes our stories don't fit market trends. Sometimes our stories are too common. Sometimes they're not common enough. Sometimes we just don't fit. But they're still our stories. And if we want to tell them, we should be able to. So Twine and game making is an easily accessible way for people to tell and distribute their own stories. Anybody can do it, which means some of the most diverse and incredible works coming, are coming from Twine's and alternative indie game making. Twine is free. Twine doesn't need programming, as you all saw the ugly slide of stop me. <laughs> you don't need to know how to do anything to make a story in Twine. And Twine's can be hosted for free. It's there, and there's a huge community surrounding it. A community that is tender, kind, that want to play your game and want to hear your story in absolute earnest. And it's remarkable. And this is the best part of why I choose game making as, part of, as a process of my healing. It's the community. <laughs> is the community that comes with it. On a strict non-emotional level, the community in games is a potentially huge area of distribution that is free to use. You can upload Twines to itch.io for free, and it comes with its own internal discovery mechanism. Your story doesn't get buried under all these other books with higher marketing budgets. Your story doesn't get buried if you accidentally place it in the wrong tag on Amazon's self-publishing section. It's amazing. And this greater area of distribution allows for access to the emotional part of building a community. As I, mentioned, as I mentioned earlier, some of those amazing support and friendships I've received and have built have come from this very community. This community has encouraged me. It has helped me grow and has taught me so much. This community has been a huge source of support that has made me a better person. It has changed my life. I wouldn't be here physically, mentally, emotionally without that community, without you all. I wouldn't have this community if I went the traditional publishing route. This was only possible in video games. Funny. <laughs>